DEA goes to battle in federal court over THC and hemp extractions. So U.S. drug regulators are doubling down on arguments that cannabis extracts with elevated THC levels are illegal, even if they come from hemp. Huh. The U.S. drug... Uh, DA, why, why is DEA... DEA is just trying to give themselves like a... Keep themselves in, employed. What's... What is, yeah. They are. What is this? <laughs> well, I mean, like, they're being... What is? What did uh, uh, Judge Thomas call this? More episodic than coherent. And so, uh, once again, in another episodic rather than coherent news story, last week the DEA was saying hemp seeds equal hemp. Today, mm. the DEA has uh, made the case Tuesday when it faced off with the Hemp Industry Associations. That's the HSA, the fight in, HSA, uh, the fight in hemp stocks or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but South Carolina CBD makers, RE Botanical Brands, they uh, really have spent some coin on this piece of litigation, which are challenging a 2020 DEA rule that criminalizes common hemp extraction practices. That is your wallet while in processing hemp. Now. That is silly, but uh, they, yeah. it, it, they go on like this. And so the DEA is still maintaining this. It's sad uh, that law enforcement tries to create policy. They should just be enforcing it, right? Like this. But it's, again, the same, it's the same enforcement. It's a literal argument. And so they are literally arguing that when you take hemp that tests compliantly under the USDA's regulation and you throw it into an extractor and you strip out all the water. Uh, and so let's say that that hemp comes in and tests at 0.3% THC and you strip it all that, uh, the, the plant material and the water and all that stuff. And that 0.3% might go up too. Uh, and suddenly that's not, that's less, that's more than 0.3. So what are you supposed to do? Create a new process where you have an, an adulterant in it the whole time so that it always stays uh, THC compliant. Or do you say, well, we're in processing right now that isn't ready for prime time before it's going to be sent into the the stream of commerce we will finish this but then uh, they, they don't care so yeah. that's the, the dea does not care that you're processing hemp they will consider it marijuana but the problem with that i mean this whole dea argument doing this is so frustrating because like future future you know when, when things are done in common sense and for the lack of everything this is benign right like cannabis we're, we're talking about something that they're arguing which is illegal is perfectly legal in recreational states right there's again mm -hmm. wrapping our heads around morality <laughs> you know and the immoral thing that's been going on is all the arrests and harassment you know it has nothing to do whether this thing is 0.3 thc or not this that the consumer is going to consume it for whatever they're looking for you know whatever uh high for lack of a better word of chasing or, or body betterment you know this is this is so crazy yeah. that they're tr trying to do this well i i just like the shane pennington shout out to him the lawyer making a um uh, mm. one of those metaphorical statements before a judge and i once did that with a, a hamburger regarding uh, certain property rights that come with um, a tenancy by the entireties and here he's doing that but he's doing it instead of a hamburger he's making a cake uh, because then you have like one thing but it's comprised of other things uh, and then those those sub subjects that you need to bake that cake are illegal and subject to dea control is what he's saying which is a little confusing and also a little silly but uh, that really is what it is. It's this wall in processing hemp extract. And so when you do that, when you extract it, it goes hot. There's nothing really you can do to really stop that other than creating a new process for that extraction that contains adulterants so that it can't go hot. But when you start to distill it, when as soon as you start to process it, to strip out that uh, adulterant or that, let's say you're using uh, ethanol. And so that ethanol during that extraction, maybe you have sufficient, you know, volume of ethanol and plant materials. So it's still hemp compliant. But then yeah. you start taking out the plant material. Then you start taking out the ethanol and, and distilling it down into um, pure cannabinoids. Then it gets hot. But again, they're saying they're saying something's illegal that. What are you going to do? You're going to come to Washington and Oregon? You're going to come on. Let's see. Go. Let's go. Oh, it's just it's just this magic. It, 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 it's what I think it is, is that evidence of the arbitrariness of this particular uh, regulation that is still being enforced, despite routinely being found to not be uh, in the interests of the United States. Uh, anyway, uh, that's that's kind of yes. where that is. And we just get, you know, before we uh, work ourselves up into a huff, uh, we actually have something new that we're going to play. And so this is going to be a little bit of fun. Yeah, um, and we're gonna play some trivia, but first, 
I, I think we should take another 420 somewhere, but I, I'm not going to do that. Yay. Yay. And then when that blue thing at the bottom goes all the way to the right, you hit end. Blue thing. I think Laura made us for it. Made us this. It's really sweet of her. Oh, you talking to Danielle? I don't know. I'm the, uh, the little blue thing at the end.